In our net examples so far, we've looked at situations where the forces act horizontally or along a floor. In this tutorial, we'll look at some net force situations that are vertical or up and down. We'll consider items falling through the air. When we consider vertical situations, the force we're always including, at least when we're not in space, is the force of gravity. Remember that gravity is the force that pulls any two objects with mass together. The gravity that's noticeable to us is the pull of the earth, a huge mass, on everything around us. A few reminders about the force of gravity. We often call it weight, and we use a floor scale to measure it. It makes massive objects difficult to lift. It makes rocks fall to the ground. It makes water fall back to the earth. And every time we trip, we're definitely reminded of its presence. Let's consider an example. A rock that weighs 20 newtons is dropped from a small cliff. What is the net force on the rock? Let's start with a free body diagram. Remember that a free body diagram includes all of the forces acting on the object. So, we'll show the force of gravity down. We know that the force of gravity always is towards the center of the Earth, which, in our free body diagram, is simply down. Now, the amount of the force of gravity would be, well, we remember that weight is just another name for the force of gravity. So we look back at our question and we see that the weight, or force of gravity, is simply 20 newtons. So we have a free body diagram, a really simple one in fact. There's only one force on it. Therefore, when we determine F net, we think, hmm, the net force is the addition of all the forces acting on the body. If there's only one force, I guess that's the only force to add. So the net force, in this case, would simply be 20 newtons down. Let's note that we did ignore friction forces here. Remember that air resistance is a type of friction force. So we actually would have some friction force if we dropped a rock. For a rock dropped off a small cliff, the actual friction force would be really small compared to the force of gravity. If we drew it on the free body diagram, it would be so small you couldn't even see it here. So for this situation, we can just ignore the friction force. Let's consider another example. This time, a balloon that weighs 2 newtons is dropped. The air resistance is 1 newton. What is the net force on the balloon? Again, we'll start with a free body diagram. We have the force of gravity, again pointing down, and it's 2 newtons, as it weighs 2 newtons. And in this case, the friction force is bigger, and the gravitational force is smaller, and therefore we do include the friction force in our free body diagram. One newton, and it's opposing the movement of the balloon, so it'll be pointing up. In this case, the net force would be two newtons going down, and then subtract the friction force as it's going in the opposite direction, and we have a net force of 1 newton pointing down. In this short tutorial, we looked at the net force acting on falling objects. To determine the net force, we draw a free body diagram and then add up all of the forces shown. We considered a situation where the air resistance was too small to consider compared to the force of gravity, that is a rock falling off a cliff. We therefore didn't include the friction force in our free body diagram. We also considered a situation where the frictional force was much bigger 
as compared to the gravitational force. So in this case, we did include it in our free body diagram.